I used to wake up at night all the time and it took me a long time to get back to sleep. One night, maybe about 4 a.m., I'd been awake for a while, just laying in bed. This was during summertime in Finland, so it wasn't very dark, even at night, mind you. Suddenly, I noticed the silhouette of a person. It's hard to describe, but it had sharp, light green outlines and was otherwise a bit see-through, but in a blurry way. A light green figure. No facial features. I could make out some shapes and even shoulder length hair. The figure looked like it was female. The figure walked into my room very lightly and almost like it was being careful. I saw her, I'll call it a she, walk around in my room and occasionally stop to look at some things. Then she walked over to me. I was still laying down so she walked over to the side of my bed and kind of crouched down and leaned down to look at me. I was a bit scared, so I didn't get a look at her face. I just stared down. She wasn't a mean presence, nor do I feel like I had a reason to fear, but I was just confused and taken aback by the situation, you know. As she was looking over me, she reached her hand out and pet me, stroked my hair kind of. She seemed gentle and curious and had a familiar and motherly presence. I don't remember feeling her touch though, I just kind of let her do that, wondering what I should do about this. I remember looking in front of me at her legs as she was standing and I was laying down and thinking that maybe it's hallucination, so I decided to reach out and touch her leg. My hand obviously went through her and I don't remember if I even felt anything. I saw her take a few steps back, then she looked around my room a bit, like you know, taking a final look and then walked out of my room. At the doorway, she turned around and waved her hand to me. Then it looked like she walked into my brother's room. I still think of her and the vibes she gave off. I know this might have been just teenage me seeing things and hallucinating while tired. It hasn't happened before though, but still. My dad's mom died before we kids were born. She was about the same height and build as this figure seemed to be. I like to think that this was her visiting and checking on us. It would explain why she was so curious looking around my room and seemed so motherly. It's a good memory, no matter what. I was 16 and talking to my then girlfriend on the phone. As I was sitting on my bed, I heard a little boy screaming mommy. I asked her if she had heard that as well, to which she informed me that she had not. We continued the conversation and about three minutes later, I heard the child yelling again. Frantically, I asked her if she had heard it and she began getting concerned that she had still not heard anything. The house I lived in had a few neighbours with children, but it was almost midnight, so most of them were already asleep. Two minutes later, I heard the child again but this time it sounded as if it came from my room. My dad was at work, so I was the only one home as my stepmother had passed away almost a year before. I didn't hear anything after the third time, and as it was 12.03, I got up to go to my kitchen to get a drink. I stopped right at the frame of my door, and for some reason, I felt compelled to turn around. When I did, there was a boy about eight or nine years old, wearing clothes from what looked like the 20s era, the kids who would be selling newspapers, vests, hats, etc. standing on my bed. He had brown eyes, dirty blonde hair and was just standing there staring at me. After seven seconds, he just seemed to dissipate and I couldn't move for about 15 seconds after. I've had extremely strange things happening around me all of my life. This includes when I was around four or five when I heard knocking at the front door and my dad telling me it was okay to answer it. It was army people coming to tell my mom that my dad had died in Vietnam. To moving a year later where we rented a house. After moving everything inside and went to sleep for the night, we would wake up the next day with the kitchen table and chairs all stacked up in the living room on top of the stacked up chairs, sofa, coffee table and console TV. This would happen every day until we moved out. 
I mentioned these couple of experiences as examples of some of the weird stuff I've seen, if only to provide some background as I've only been truly terrified in my existence once, which thank the good Lord is buried behind a wall in my mind. Otherwise, I do not think I would be sane or even possibly alive now. I've lived in Florida for 11 years now, as I needed a warmer climate due to multiple injuries which involved broken bones among other things. But ever since moving into the master bedroom maybe five years ago, I felt like I was being watched at first. I just chalked it up to being hyper vigilant as I have a service dog who hasn't reacted to anything as far as I know. But after maybe a year or so later, I started seeing five shadow people walking in from the Florida room. They would stand at the foot of my bed and I assume were watching me, otherwise they would have been staring at a wall. I did not feel frightened or anything like that, nor did I sense any type of malevolent type of energy when they were in the room. Now, I'm always awake when this happens, never asleep, as something else happens then. This happens sometimes during the daytime, but also in the evenings as well. The shadow people stopped appearing after I had some work done in the Florida room and had the sliding glass door covered up. I will note that I also keep blackout curtains covering all windows and the sliding glass door so now shadows from external sources could not be the cause. Since then, I've only seen the shadow people a few times a year. But this is what I am seeking guidance on. Ever since I moved into the master bedroom, I felt as if someone is climbing onto the bed as if to either sit or lay down. This happens multiple times a night, every single night. To be honest, this has scared the crap out of me several times, as I'm either usually dozing off or actually asleep. Now at first, I thought I was either dreaming this, as I have had nightmares of being in a theatre, and some of the things I saw ever since I was released from the hospital and discharged from the military, or it was just my imagination working overtime. But here's the kicker, my service dog who sleeps near me to wake me up, if I'm unable to wake up, from one of the daily nightmares, just a small part of her training, will lay down beside me when I lay down to go to sleep. But after I've settled down and am relaxed, she no longer lays on the bed, but instead on the floor in the same type of position and placement as if she were laying on the bed. I don't know what a deal is. As she slept on the bed and in the same place prior to moving into the master bedroom since I first bought her home, I mean, she knows her training, so this has kind of been a concern with me. Something else I would like to mention, though it may not mean anything, is that my clock that has a wireless charging resets the clock date every few days. And though not every day, but again a couple of times a week, my iPhone, though my battery will be above 90%, will end up less than 10% the next morning. Finally, when I do feel the bed sinking as if someone sitting down or laying down, I get this feeling that I'm near something I definitely should not be. Hello everyone, I hope that this is the right place for telling you guys this. I really need to have an external opinion since everyone who knows this story doesn't believe me. It all started two years ago. I was with my ex-boyfriend on his motorcycle and a car hit us. We didn't have any injuries but I passed out and as soon as I wake up I saw this red haired woman staring at me. There were other people and all of them tried to help us she was far away just staring at us and smiling. After that, I couldn't forget her look. I felt like she was watching in my soul, I don't know. So I asked my boyfriend and he said that he didn't see her. A year passed and I kind of forgot about this. Until this February, when I was walking with my dog, a child crossing the road tripped over and a bus almost hit him. I don't know why, but my first instinct was to look into the bus. Guess who I saw? The same woman from the accident who was always smiling. I thought it was strange, but just a, just a coincidence since my town is little. The odds started a week ago. I was with my friends and we decided to go at the sea, which is two hours from the train where I live. We arrive and do our things, and suddenly my friend falls off the rock. It looked bad, so we took him on the beach, and again, this woman was there. 
This time it was really strange because she was wearing long pants and a hoodie on the beach. Honestly, I freaked out and I wanted to talk to her so bad, but I felt like I shouldn't, so I didn't. Again, I asked my friends if they saw her too and they said no. I don't really know what to think. I don't even know if she's a real person at this point. I'm going crazy. So I'm a 23 year old man and I recently had an experience quite unlike any of my lifetime. I live in a community housing project. I would say it's half a hotel, motel and half apartment. It's one building with three floors of maybe about 20 different studio bedrooms on each floor and two other buildings with the same except these are two bedrooms. That's neither here nor there, just trying to give some perspective. I've been staying at this place for about eight years now. I haven't really had any problems at all, I wouldn't say. This is a problem, not as of yet at least. Now, there was an old lady that stayed directly across from me. She must have had kind of a rough life because she broke down pretty bad mentally over time. Every night since I first moved here, I would hear her screaming and yelling and cursing, literally having whole entire conversations. Now, this was weird from Jump Street after the first few days when I realized she lives completely alone. I heard her literally making threats every night and sometimes crying and apologizing to someone. Now after a while, I actually ended up getting used to this behavior. Sometimes I would actually bump into her, not literally, in the hall. No one talked to her and she just pointed at everybody and would say the most vicious evil things to literally everybody. Our first encounter, I was met with this same treatment. I fake smiled her off and asked how she was doing because ever since the death of my grandmother in 2014, I for some reason have an extreme soft spot and instant love for old ladies. Not in a weird kind of way. Just kind of like, how are you? Let me help you with your bags, man, kind of way. I approached this lady in a similar fashion and she seemed to didn't know how to take it. But she did not meet me with the same aggression as she does to anyone else she laid her eyes on. Now, remember when I said I was eight months in here? Yeah, fast forward to about July 1st, just several weeks ago. By this time, me and this lady have crossed paths about nine or ten times. Briefly, but a few times. We never really had a conversation at all, but I would always make sure I spoke and acknowledged the woman, and she didn't really show emotion but a little gratitude. Now, every day, all day, she would still continue this manic-like screaming in her room. She very literally was sounding like an older, very, very angry middle-aged man. Now, as I said, I was directly across from her, but we are also right dead at the end of our long ass hallway. And to make things even better, I have a 10 hour shift job that I work four or five days a week. I'm working 4 p.m. to 5 a.m. shift. So just imagine, long day of work, get to your home, you're at the very end of the hall, almost isolated with this lady. At 4 a.m., we know it's very early, but very late too. Also, it is still dark outside when I pull up to my apartments. It would be fucking 4.30 and this woman is still up barking, growling, shouting, evil, haunting, spooky shit. Sounding like a man. I swear this is absolutely no exaggeration. Now, onto the scary part. Right now, it's 4.14 a.m. as I type this. I actually took a day off today and I think I may take another to wrap my mind around what has happened in the last few days. On July 18th, roughly around 6 a.m., this is Sunday morning, the woman was found dead in her room right across from me. She was not killed anybody, ever came to see her or anything. She had no relationships as far as any residents here ever knew. A maintenance man would check on her at least once a day because like me, he felt very bad for the old woman. When he checked on her on this day, He'd seen her and obviously reported it. She was found at 6am. They had her wrapped up and gone by 9am. From what I was told, I really didn't ask much. They say it was natural causes or suicide. Now I spent this past weekend at my girlfriend, so I wasn't present when whatever happened, happened. But when I returned to my apartment Sunday, at around maybe 11.30 or 12, 
I walked the halls and literally for the first time in eight months, I heard no screaming. Now keep in mind, I have no knowledge of what has happened. I'm walking to my door. I see absolutely no one in sight. I turn and stick my key in. I hear a familiar voice. It's the old lady, but she looks much different. She looked cleaner, looked happy. Hair wasn't all over the place from constantly running into walls. And she actually spoke clearly. She saw me and said, hey, and I was shocked at just that simple three letter basic greeting from this woman. Honestly, with the events that transpired, I cannot remember our exact conversation verbatim, but it was literally happiest and best I've ever seen her. It took me three seconds to realize it was her. Now keep in mind, once again, I am not knowledgeable of her death. At this point in my encounter with her, it was approaching 12 p.m. She allegedly died at 6 a.m. But anyways, we had a brief conversation and I said, I'll see you later, ma'am. I'm a little tired. You look beautiful today. She said, I'll see you again, young man. She said this and walked back into her apartment. It was something about her. She had a certain glow to her. A certain force and energy that I had never felt before from her. But anyways, now at this time, I think nothing about it. And I go in my house, shut my door and use the restroom. A lady from the rental office who I'm close with and look at as a godmother named Miss Tate came and knocked on my door. I opened and she asked me how I was doing. I told her fine, chilling, you know, the usual. She had a very shocked and horrified and sad look on her face. She said, have you heard about the incident? I said, no, what's going on? She says, the woman across the hall from you took her own life this morning. Now I look at her and say nothing for like legitimately 15 seconds. I ask, are you talking about the screaming lady across the hall? She says, yes. I ask, are you sure it was her? She gives me a confused look before quickly saying, I've seen that lady with my own eyes, sweetie. I say, I seen her with my own eyes just 15 or 20 minutes ago. Miss Tate, I don't know if this was supposed to be a joke or what, but you need to give this up. She looked dumbfounded and we nearly had a bad argument. And I said, let's go to her room right now. She repeatedly says, I'm not going. You can go all you want. She was saying she was never going in that room again. Now Miss Tate cooled down and she actually showed me all the proof and paperwork. Now I'm literally lost for words. I never even got that woman's name. Miss Tate told me she suffered from extreme schizophrenia and dementia. Also, she had a very sad last half of her life. So at my high school, built above the church is a library. Nothing too big, about the size of a basketball court. At the back of the library is a small room for teachers only. He goes into the room, closes the door behind him and starts grading for the night. Because of how late it was in the papers he was grading, he eventually nods off and only wakes up because he hears rustling coming from the other room. Thinking it's some students up to no good, he yells, no one is supposed to be here this late, you guys. I'm gonna be in trouble. The rustling stops, but the door starts shaking like someone is trying to get in. He yells louder, the door shakes harder. He starts to think that these aren't students and might be something more sinister, so he just starts praying. Eventually, the door stops shaking and he gets up and looks through the keyhole to see who was doing all this. As he looks through the, he the hole, he sees the room empty, but a shade of red. He falls back and starts praying till the sun comes up. When the sun comes up, he opens the door, runs through the library, down the stairs and out the church. He runs into the security guard and asks him if he saw anything strange last night. The guard says, yes. I saw a demon with red eyes through the window of the library last night, so I didn't go near there. After I heard that, I never used that library for the rest of my time there. Barely graduated. When I was in the age span of two to eight, I had an imaginary friend named Nobody. It all started with me and my mom moving into an apartment above a disco. My mom went to work while I went to the kindergarten. 
and because I didn't have a lot of friends back then, I mostly played alone when I came home. One day, my mother told me she heard strange noises from my room. It was me speaking to someone. When she asked who I was speaking to, I always answered, nobody. My mom didn't take it seriously because it was normal for children at my age to have an imaginary friend. Things got serious though when after a few weeks, I started to stay awake during nights. I stopped eating and also was too scared to enter my home. When my mom asked me what's wrong, I only said that she is scaring me. And when my mom asked who she is, I answered again, nobody. After a week, everything seemed fine again. But mom was concerned, so she asked me about nobody. What did she look like? She had shoulder long brown hair, was really tall, had a hole in her head and a lot of blood on her body. What did she do? She mostly just stood there watching me and when I asked her questions, she either nod or shook her head. Did she tell you anything? No, she doesn't speak. My mom wanted to find out more about our apartment because all this started when we moved here. Turns out in the next apartment, a woman got shot by her husband because he thought she had cheated on him. She told me that my description matched with the woman who got murdered. Now my mom never told me about anything else including her and I hardly remember her. All I know is how she died when I stopped seeing her and that when I was eight and at grandma, I ran up to her when we were taking a walk. I pointed at the water and screamed, she's dead. She fell in the water and drowned. I don't know what that means, but yeah, that's my story. I work in a school here in Germany, which is from grade five to grade 13. Back then it used to be another school, but they changed it after a fire in our school's gym. I worked as a social assistant for the afternoon classes and ever since I started, I felt a presence in the halls of one specific building, building C. It all started when I heard complaints from the clean ladies that our faucets run only and start running. It confused me a bit because at that day, no one used the bathrooms. It got worse, doors and windows locking and unlocking. Most windows have these little locks that you pull down so no one can open it, but we found those unlocked several times after locking them. Lights break even after the janitors fix them, especially one specific light near our office. Things always go missing, mostly keys or keychains, just to find them hidden at random places. We're all still looking for that one key. We have a glass door in front of our bookcase and when we close it, it's usually open again after a few hours with dirty handprints on it, even though no children were there. No one quite believes me. I'm thinking we're dealing with a trickster spirit here that just loves to mess with us. Lately, it started to be more active again ever since the kids came back from their online meetings. It was less active during quarantine only locking it, unlocking a few windows, and that's it. I also heard it knocking against the tiles in the bathrooms, where I presume it is often, as most complaints come from the female bathrooms in the buildings, such as knocking or locking the doors or the faucets. Before we moved to the countryside, my mum, brother and I used to live in a village in West Sussex, England. The houses weren't very old at all, just standard council houses that were probably built in the 70s. But I always seemed to have odd experiences. My mum and brother were immune. First experience, when I was very young, around three or four years old, I was in bed awake and I remember a hand came out of the wall and grabbed me by my left wrist. It looked like a man's hand and was surrounded by a green glow, almost like a haze. I had jumped upright and can, even to this day, distinctly remember basically wrestling this thing off me and running straight to my mum's room to say what had happened. I can still remember the pressure on my left wrist. Now, I'm very cynical. I would say that this was just a dream. But something which has seemed odd to this day is that even as I ran to my mum's room, the hand was still hanging out of my wall, visible. 
I slept in her room for a while after that. Experience two. Often when I was trying to sleep in my mum's room, I would struggle to doze off. I can remember often hearing the noise of Victorian style horse and cards. Although this isn't as clear in my memory as the first experience, there was a time where I saw one almost seeming to fly into the room. It was white and almost see-through. I may have been dreaming, but who knows? I would love to know if anyone has had any similar experiences, especially with the first one. As mentioned, my mum and brother never saw anything, but along with the fact that I could still see the hand in the wall afterwards, the fact that I've always remembered this experience makes me feel like it was more than a dream. I live alone with two cats and don't really get along and often fight. I let them have free range of the apartment, which means they can be on the counters or cupboards while not in use, and I disinfect the surfaces when I use. My boyfriend often stays the night as well, but he doesn't notice anything. The first time I noticed something was up was when I was playing my electronic piano keyboard. I had my keyboard set up with the power cord stretched out so I could sit on my couch and play on it. I was being lazy that day, but it still had a little slack. Well, I messed up and started over for like the 50th time and it felt like my power cord was ripped from the keyboard. At first I thought it was the cats, so I yelled at them like, hey, stop that. But my cats weren't close enough to the power cord at the time to make it pull out like that. The next event was when I was sleeping. I don't have an AC in my bedroom and the one in the living room doesn't reach the bedroom very well. So during the summer, I sleep in the living room to keep cool. When I moved out of my parents' house, I was supposed to trade them my old twin bed for a queen bed, but they never picked up the twin bed, so I kept it and made it into a couch, which is convenient when I have guests over, or when I don't feel like sleeping in the bedroom. My cats have gotten into multiple fights under my couch, making it shake, so when I woke up in the middle of the night to that couch shaking, I thought it was them fighting. So I called out still having my eyes closed, stop that, and it did stop. When I opened my eyes, my male cat was laying right by my left knee, and my female cat was on top of the cupboards. I was thinking, what the fuck? But then I went back to sleep without a thought. Another event was when my boyfriend was staying the night, but he didn't think of it. We were sleeping in the living room, I have my wall clock set up right above the couch, so when I woke in the middle of the night for no reason, I looked up at the clock. Not to check the time, but because it was the first thing I saw when I woke up. I stared at it for a minute, and my clock just dropped straight down. The top of the daybed frame caught it and broke a little of the bottom frame, so it didn't land on me or my boyfriend. I screamed because I thought it was going to hit me and my boyfriend. Said my scream and the crash woke him. He hung up for me again the next morning. I started to sleep in the bedroom again but with the door open and a fan in the doorway to circulate the cold air into the bedroom. My bed frame is a dresser platform frame but most of the drawers are broken so I don't use them unless for storage. After I cleaned the whole apartment I noticed the middle drawer on the left side was open so I closed it. I thought it was the cat because they have opened cupboards and drawers before so I brushed it off. The last time my boyfriend stayed the night, the same drawer was open, so I closed it before we left to bum around. We came back because I left something and he needed the restroom. I went to the bedroom to look for what I'd forgotten, and that same drawer was open again, but this time the one behind it was open too. Now this drawer is so broken, the tracks are bent and one is missing, and the bottom of the drawer is missing. I struggled to get it open and close, and this drawer was open just as much as the first one and was sitting perfectly straight. I was like, what the fuck? I went to close the drawers again, and this broken drawer falls off balance the moment I touch it, making me have to pick it up and shimmy it back in there. I finally told my boyfriend about these experiences and he doesn't believe me. When I came back later that night, those drawers were opened again, but only slightly and my closet door was opened. I woke the other day and a rock I have sitting on my counter as decoration was on the ground like three feet away from where it was. 
Yesterday my air sea airflow levers were facing inwards and I have them angled out. Today, after I got home from work, the broken drawer was slightly opened again. I don't know what to do or why this is suddenly happening. So when I was about four years old, I had two ghost experiences that I want to share. It was very late at night, probably past midnight, and I suddenly woke up from my sleep. I'm not sure why I did this, but I had the sudden urge to look outside my window. My house is located at kind of an intersection. There's a street to the left, to the right, and one straight ahead. This window was facing the street straight ahead of me. I looked out the window and I see this white lady. What I mean by white lady is that she was wearing a white long gown. She had long black hair that covered her face and she was kind of glowing. Not like a bright blinding glow, but a dim glow. Or at least in contrast to the night sky she was glowing. I remember just staring at her and her facing me. Possibly staring at me too. I didn't feel much emotion. I wasn't scared, frightened or even weirded out. I was just staring at her until I stopped and went back to bed. The second encounter was pretty similar. I woke up late at night and felt the urge to look outside. But this time, I wasn't in my bedroom. At that time I was living in the Philippines and at night it gets pretty hot. So my grandparents decided that we could put a bed on our balcony. This balcony was on the second floor and the house had three floors. So I go to the ledge of the balcony and I see the white lady again. This time she was on the street that is to the left of my house. She was just standing there facing me and I was just staring at her for who knows how long until I went back to sleep on my bed. I remember these encounters pr pretty vividly even though I was pretty young. Do y'all think it was a ghost or an actual lady? Maybe it was a spirit from a family member. To start off, I'm in the US military and worked at a naval air station that is in the middle of nowhere in Nevada. It's the base where they filmed the Top Gun movies in the 80s. I was a corpsman there and at the end, the time of my experience and worked in the clinic. For a week at a time every month or so, at night I had duty to make sure things were locked properly and immunizations were kept cool. Real simple and pointless shit to keep us busy. The clinic had a patient waiting area in the middle surrounding it is a pharmacy and a lab as well as dental and medical home ports with immunizations on the way back. One night while I was on duty, I felt a strange presence. Like I wasn't alone and I felt eyes on me while I was doing my rounds. Mind you, it was dark enough to where you can't see, but light enough to where you can make out shapes and shadows. At the front desk for medical home ports, there's a phone alarm that goes off and one of the emergency cords are pulled in the bathrooms. I was in the back closing all the doors due to people leaving them open during the workday. I hear the phone go off. The alarm is loud and has an earth shattering tone. Being the only person in the clinic at the time, I practically shit myself. I shakenly walked to the front desk, checked the phone. It said E6IMZ. I let out one single word and it was tight. Naturally, I walk over to the immunization department and open its door. Inside is a desk, the refrigerator with the IMS, a back room with a patient bed, another desk and a bathroom. Above the bathroom is a flashing light indicating the cord was pulled. I open the door, no lights were on. The cord wasn't pulled. As I turned around, the door I used to enter the IMS department slams shut. The hair on the back of my neck stood up and I ran out leaving the IMS unlocked. I quickly locked up the clinic and got the hell out of there for the night. I told my co-workers about this experience the next day and they weren't surprised. They say there's a little girl who runs through the halls late at night as well as a man who reads a paper in the waiting room. The dental tech also stated that the lights in the dental consult constantly turn themselves on. Every time I had duty there, I feel like I'm being watched. This time is not in the military clinic. This took place when I was in about a junior or sophomore in high school. 
Growing up, I lived in a small farm town in Illinois that has been around since the late 1800s. There's a ton of grave sites around and cornfields. One summer evening, my friend and I were riding our bikes down a trail and stumbled upon a gated graveyard that was surrounded by a forest and no houses or train tracks for a few miles. We went into it to see if we knew any names. The oldest grave dated back to the late 1700s and the youngest was 1920. The names on the grave sites were all similar, so we assumed it was a private family graveyard. As we continued to explore, I felt very uneasy, as if I was disturbing the peace of the area. Next thing you know, we hear three distinct whistle blows from a child's train whistle you would buy at a Native American trading post, or a knick-knack store in a touristy area. The whistle was coming from inside the forest and kept getting closer to the grave sites, always coming in threes. Choo choo choo. After hearing the sound approaching, we hightailed it out of there, never to return. Never came to mind what was making these sounds due to us being nowhere near a train track, accessible road by car, or playground area. Only explanation is someone waiting in the forest for another person to come by to scare. Or, it was some ghost child messing around.